News of the Big Ten on Wednesday. Maryland announcing that its game with Ohio State this weekend has been canceled. This due to a COVID outbreak within the Terrapins program. The team announcing that eight football players have tested positive for the virus within the last seven days. As a result, the team is pausing all football-related activities. Here is the statement from A.D. Damon Evans. Quote, there's nothing more important than the health and well-being of our student-athletes, coaches, and staff. We realize this news is disappointing to all of the Maryland fans out there who are looking forward to the Terps taking on an outstanding Ohio State team. But the responsible thing for us to do is to pause football activities given the number of positive cases currently in our program. And we welcome you into the big show. It is presented by Speedway, Dave Revson and Howard Griffith. Look, this is the right thing to do. I don't think anyone would dispute it. Tough, though, for a Maryland team that it did feel like was picking up a little momentum. You're right. You're talking about a team that has turned the corner, really started to play really well on the offense and the defensive side. So you talk about that momentum, being able to build, having a quality opponent in Ohio State. You look at Ohio State, a lot of things that they could continue to work on as they prepare for this game as well, but they'll have to take the week off. That gets the Buckeyes in just a bit, but Maryland consecutive conference wins in the same season for the first time since joining the Big Ten as we welcome in Coach Wanstead. And just tough to see it again, right thing to do. But man, it felt like Coach Loxley had things going here. And now we'll see how long they're going to have to be off, Coach. In Wisconsin's case, it was two weeks. True. Every, everything that, that you and Howard said is true. But, but I look at this as they're not going to take away those two wins. And right now, Coach Loxley, you know, in his second year at the program at Maryland, Generally, this is the year you look for a signature win. Well, he, he beat two 11-win teams from a year ago, and, and one of them, Penn State, he dominated, who is in, obviously, the, the, the uh, same division. So I, I look at this thing as a program builder right now. You know, recruiting, that's the key to this thing. Recruits right now, it's, it's got everybody's attention. In fact, I just heard today or read today that they signed, they got a commitment, not signed, they got a commitment out of a four-star recruit. And how about facilities? You know, Mike Loxley, come, he's been at Alabama, he's been at some of the great programs, and every coach comes in, I did it myself, and you want to make improvements on facilities for your players. And now, all of a sudden, you win these two games, Boy, the administration and the alumni, they're looking and saying, you know what, the arrow's pointing up. Let's give a little more support here. So this was, the, where he sits right now is great for the program going forward. Already done a great job with Cole Fieldhouse. You talk about recruiting, we saw that paying dividends this weekend. <laughs> Kim Jarrett was fantastic in that game against Penn State. So as you guys say, bump in the road, yep. but something that Maryland has to do. As for the Buckeyes, you take a look at their schedule. Again, they'll be off until a huge showdown, as it turns out, <laughs> next week against Indiana. You ever thought you'd ever be saying that right I now? Know, I know. <laughs> the battle of top ten teams, at least on paper, that appears to be the toughest game left on their slate. They have Illinois, Michigan State, the traditional season ender against Michigan. Those are the games that follow that battle with the Hoosiers. Uh, Howard Buckeyes. Perfect record. Past game, of course, has been absolutely remarkable for them. So now they have a week off. What do you expect to see them to you know, working on here as they look forward to that game against Indiana? Well, hopefully to be able to really refine and really get that running game where they want it to be. I understand where they are as far as the backs are concerned, uh, but they still have to continue to get better. And I think this gives them an opportunity. You know, one thing going through this process is, how are you going to handle it? How are you going to manage this uh, not being able to play this week? And, you know, you look at Ohio State and Mickey Moratti, who, who really has his hands on everything, really the pulse of, of that program. He's going to make sure that there's no time wasted. So they'll be ready. And I think but what they need to focus on is that run game, getting that better. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And, you know, it. Um, no, let's go back to last week. You know, and, and obviously I know Greg Shiano very well. There's, there's nobody, in my opinion, that can attack uh, an offensive line, their run game, their pass protections like Gray can. And last week, there were f he, w close to 15 pressures that he dialed up. I mean, they, they, they had eight tackles for losses, Rutgers did, against Ohio State, two sacks. So this is a great opportunity for Ryan Day <laughs> to take the time with the film and make these corrections. And, and when you win, you can be a little more cr critical and you say, hey, guys, we're going to see this. It's a copycat league. Someone else is going to try it. It might be Indiana next week. It might be Michigan at the end. But we got to get this stuff squared away.
Could use some work on defense as well. Only two teams in the Big Ten have given up more plays of 20 yards or longer than Ohio State has this season. We saw that defense airtight a year ago. Hasn't quite been the case this year. But again, nice problems to have when you're <laughs> right. Ohio State. A week to work on it. As for the team.